conceived of this like massive family which has like 20, 30, 40,000 people. All of those grandkids and this and that and super great grandkids and all of that that came from him, subhanAllah, Jade. And so your life, what you do, big responsibility, Jade, for all those who are still to come after you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Noble Quran, Save yourself and your family from the hellfire, Jade. Save yourself and your family from the hellfire. And we all know that we are all shepherds. And every shepherd is responsible with regards to their flock. The wife is a shepherd over the kids. And the father is also a shepherd over the kids. Important, right? The father and the mother, both of them are shepherds over their, over their flock. Uh, now, how exactly can we fulfill this responsibility? What are some practical ways, etc.? What are some things that we could do? And so, a few pointers. Something that I had mentioned at our previous uh, talk that I recently purchased this year. 101 conversation starters for families. Try it. Recently I bought this and I was uh, using this at home and I found it to be extremely beneficial. Try it. S sometimes these tools uh, or these games or whatever else it might be, they foster the environment. You say, you know, you must talk to your kid. Yeah, but how? Uh, but, but how? Well, what exactly I must do? Try it. I mean, I see Islam alaikum, how was school? Khalas, he's gone. Jayid. Now, what do I do? Like, you know, I'm just call you, uh, Ahmed, come sit, let's talk. Hey, you think, well, Father, something happened? I mean, what's going on? I mean, you smoke something? What's going on? Like, Jayid. Uh, so now, you need to find some way to facilitate. Jayid. I'm not talking about you. MashaAllah, all of you in communication, you and your family, well, alhamdulillah, 100%. I'm talking about myself. Jayid. And so, needed to look for like some sort of excuse. So my eldest kid, he's uh, almost 12. And then after that, you got Hannah, she's 6. And then Umar is 4. And then Hamza is 2. And then, inshaAllah, the next one on the way. And so, to facilitate... And so after Salatul Maghrib, uh, we go through this thing here, right? We've been going through it uh, for recently. And, and so it's just like, like questions there. Conversation starters. So he asks, for example, uh, let's say, for example, you had a magical door. And if you walk through this door, you could become anyone in the world. Who would you like to become? Right? And then you ask the kid. And then he says, I, I would like to become Erturul. Uh, and then this one says, I want to become Mickey Mouse. So whatever it might be. And then you ask them why. You know, it just creates a discussion. It facilitates a discussion. Then the other one was, uh, if there were, was there any animal in the world that you could be, what animal would it be? Right? And so my son, he said he wants to be Simba. Right? That was he said, I want to be a Simba. Well, Simba. Simba is lion. Right? My daughter said, no, I want to be a leopard. Okay, but why? Why do you want to be a lion? Well, what's special about the lion? Uh, why do you like to be a, a, you know, a, a leopard? Right? You change your spots or what, what's going on, etc. Right? And so it creates you know, that discussion. Then there was another one here. When do you feel loved? Right? When do you feel loved? And so my son... My son said, when you buy me presents, right? that was his answer. Right? When I get presents, that's when I feel loved. And side note, the guy who put this together, Gary Chapman, he's got a very, 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 very super famous book entitled, The Five Love Languages, which we'll discuss tomorrow at the course, inshallah, right? That he, he mentions it, it, it came out of uh, one couple's therapy that he was doing. So the wife is saying that, you know, my husband is like, but he doesn't love me, doesn't love me, doesn't love me. So the husband is like, I mean, we married 20 years now. What she's talking, I don't love her. I'm always, I, I take out the dirt and I uh, work hard and I mow the lawn and I help her with the dishes and I do that and I do this and I do this and I do this and I do all of this here. What does she mean I don't love her? I only do that because I love her. So he says after he dealt with this case here and many other similar cases, he came to the conclusion that we express love differently. The husband, he's maybe Android, and she is Apple. They're communicating in different ways. He says, I love you. She says, I love you. But he expresses his love in a different manner than what she expects. She wants to receive love in a different way. And maybe she also expresses love in a different way. So he narrowed it down to five. Right? He mentions, for example, uh, one is gifts. Right? So some people, they express their love by giving, showering you with something. They only do this because they love you. Another one day, it's, uh, it's quality time. 
So this person, that, that, that's how they express their love. They want you to sit with them and give them undivided attention. They're not worried about the gift. You can buy a million dollar gift for her or for him. That doesn't really interest them too much. But rather quality time, sit and talk, look into each other's eyes, etc. You know, that's the way that they feel love. Uh, he mentions, for example, another one is service. So he says, like this guy here, he was expressing his love like many men being in service of the family. I, I'm working the whole day from 6 o'clock in the morning until 6 p.m. to put food on the table here. I'm doing it because I love you, Sumeya. I, I was mowing the lawn early morning on the Sunday morning when it's cold because I love you, Sumeya. I, I said, you know, you relax. I will wash the dishes. Because that's how I feel I'm expressing my love for you. I took out the dirt because that's how I feel I'm expressing my love for you. Everyone has a, he says, a primary love language. Now, maybe your primary love language is to be in service of somebody. But maybe your wife's primary language is, is quality time. Maybe your wife's primary language is receiving gifts, etc. So there's a mismatch here, Jaid. You need to communicate to them according to their love language. You need to understand each other's love language, Jaid. And so, when I ask my daughter, when do you feel loved, etc., etc., so she said, when you come home, Jaid, when you, when you come home. In the last month, I was at home for probably maybe about three or four days, Jaid. Imam Development Program, Namibia and Botswana, went back home two, three days, was then in Karachi for the home sweet home course, one week, di da da, came back home for two days, went to Tanzania for one week, came back home, 24 hours, left to come here. Now you can understand when somebody doesn't want to walk from there to come forward, how it a bit irritates. Are you with us, Shemashaykh? Now you understand, you know? Enjoy it. So, huh? Hayakumullah. Naam, of course, doctor. Try it. Hayakumullah. So what did she say? Huh? Now, now, now if, I, if we didn't do this exercise, if I didn't do this exercise with her, I wouldn't have known that. I, are you with that? I, I never knew that it meant so much to her. You know, like you're walking in the house and then she runs there, etc. She's only six years old. But I never knew that it meant so much to her. Until, you know, use these things. Jade, it's like an excuse. Jade, buy it. I even saw the, uh, what do you call it? The app version. But what will happen today with the app version? We won't use it, isn't it? It'll be on the phone there and it will never get used. And so for like uh, $10, for like $10, buy it, keep it in the lounge there and then use it inshallah. If it enhances your relationship with your kid and your family and all of this here, even 2%, alhamdulillah. Recently in Karachi, a brother, mashallah, this guy has been for, you know, what's this guy? Tim, 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 this American guy. He does all of these... Uh, uh, self-development courses. What's his name? Not Tim Humble, Sheikh. <laughs> Not Tim Humble. Is his name Tim something? I don't know. It's this famous guy, famous guy in America. Not a Muslim guy. Jaid? Huh? No, not a river. Not a Muslim guy. Jaid, you know, many do this course like transform yourself and uh, self-development and one of these super famous guy, mega class something. He's got the master class. Tony Robbins, yes, Tony Robbins. Ahlan wa sahlan, doctor. Hayakallah. Jay, Tony Robbins. So this brother in Pakistan, uh, he's telling me that, you know, he's going soon for another Tony Robbins uh, course. And he's already done like about 10 and he's like on the coach level and he's done this course and that course and 1 million courses, etc. So I said, okay, now this next one that you're going to go, uh, how much of like real benefit you're going to come out of it? And he said, the whole course, etc., might be five days. Most of that stuff I've already listened to and stuff like that. But the value of one idea, one idea or one habit or something that I could get when I'm there, that outweighs the price that I would pay for that course. Very important. He says that I'm going to travel from Pakistan, go to America, do that course for one week. It's stuff that I've already read and seen the YouTube video and da da. But now being in that course for five days, maybe on the third day, I thought of something. Maybe on the third day, I thought of maybe a startup. Or maybe I thought of, hey, wow, I, I didn't think about this thing here. Maybe whatever they said didn't directly relate to what's your business and your background. But because you were in that environment which was conducive to you thinking about that matter, the idea was born. And that idea could be a million dollar idea. It could be an idea which betters your relationship, etc., etc. Are you with us? 
point to that is, similarly, in many Islamic talks and this and that, etc., some courses and stuff, the guy says, no, marriage and, you know, a history of Abu Bakr or something, I've been there, done that, I, I know everything, khair. you know, I read the you know, 10 volume book, etc., what am I going to learn? It's not necessarily what you're going to learn there. There's not a, I mean, there's obviously a reason why every Friday you have another khutbah. I mean, you could just suffice with one khutbah. Khalas, here's a summary. Surah Al-Asr, as Imam Shafi said, it suffices you your whole life. One khutbah a year, khalas, job is done. No, you require that constant reminder, Jayid. You require that constant uh, self-reflection. And so, some, some similarly with an Islamic course and uh, talks and stuff. You know, I sat there. Yeah, okay, 90% of the stuff I heard before. The Quran, is it not full of repetition? 90% of the stuff I heard before, yeah. Okay, that, that's a good idea, that man. I mean, you never know. Maybe somebody from here, inshallah, they'll go out and they'll buy this thing here. Shahid? And mashallah, I would expect that you will do one this for the relationship between yourself and your kid. And he's got another one. Converse 101 conversation starters for couples. So just between husband and wife, Shahid? And then mashallah, I also got this one here recently. Discover your child. Jade, so picked this one up in Pakistan recently and started it with my children. So discover your child. So it's like it's got place for you to write inside there. And it's got these questions. But on this, not, not these exact questions, but similar questions. Right? Uh, but more Islamic orientated. Uh, but uh, there's this area for you to write down the answers. Jade, so you write down the answers so you can record it, etc., etc. Like for example... Uh, do you fall asleep quickly at night or does it take you a while? If it takes you a while, what do you do and what do you think about? It's very interesting, Jade. I'd like to know. You know, my six-year-old daughter, I mean, you went to sleep, okay, yeah. You know, we told you, Khalas, half past seven, to bed. But, you know, do you fall asleep straight away? Maybe you are not tired. What are you thinking about, etc., etc., Jade? And you know your kids. I know, like, my son, you know, he's a thinker. I can just see, you know, he's sitting there and he's busy thinking, thinking all different things, etc., Jade. Uh, do you like your name? Do, I mean, how many a kid? His name is... Uh, his name is... Uh, okay, I was about to say Mustafa, but anyway. Right? His name is Mustafa. Maybe he's 30 years old. I'm not talking about you, Sheikh. Right? right? Maybe there's a guy, Mustafa. 30 years old. He say, you ask him, you know, what does your name mean? That's a good question. You know, I, I never thought about that. Right? Well, here... At least there's an opportunity between the father and the children, etc. Do you know what your name means, Jayid? Do you like your name, Jayid? Uh, any other name you like us to call you, Jayid? Who has the best job in the world? Do you think uh, that that's a good job? Would you like to have that job? I mean, it gets them thinking, oh, what's the best job in the world? You know, Jayid, uh, uh, no, Jayid. Who's the funniest person that you know, Jayid? The Prophet sallallahu loves you. How much do you love him, Jayid? And what can you do to love him more? Do you think there's life on other planets? If you were an astronaut and you would like to travel in space, where would you like to go? Well, number one, at least the father gets to know a few planets. I mean, he doesn't know any of the planets. At least, okay, yeah, well, my kid, you know, what are some of the names of the planets? Uh, you guys know? Ah, you, you, did you know? Okay, oh, Google it up. Majority of the planets out there, they have Arab names. Jay, they have Arabic origin names. Uh, it, it starts a con One question here leads to half an hour of a conversation between yourself and your kids. Good book, Sheikh? What do you think? Good one? Tell your father to buy it, inshallah. Huh? Excellent. Hassan, what do you think? Good idea. Huh? Excellent, Hassan. Try it. What does Hassan mean? No idea. Hassan means good. Hassan means beautiful. Hassan means something is very, very nice. Somebody does something, we say, Ahsanta, you've done well. You've done well. Jayid, Ahsanta, you've done well. Excellent. So, Ya Mashaykh, we said that. Uh, children are a blessing, etc. We said that, number one, be a good role model. How much of time do we have left? I've already prayed my Salatul Isha. What time? How much time left, Sheikh? 15 minutes, inshallah. Yalla. So, we said, number one, you need to be a good example. You need to be a good example. If you're a smoker, you are taking drugs, you are screaming in the house at your wife and she's screaming back at you, etc. The children, that's the first madrasa. Don't blame them later on when they are screaming and shouting and speaking bad language. I mean, it's ajib. I've seen some kids, like three, four years old, and the kid is swearing. F and B, you know, vulgar language. And the, the parents are like laughing. <laughs> you know, how cute the kids. Allah understand, Jade. Mushkila. Allah Mustan. 
Maybe we should call those sisters to sit down here. Huh? Uh, those, no. There's kids here too, mashallah. Jayit. Hayyakumullah. Jayit. So, if there's domestic violence at home, you need to lead by example. That's the point, Jayit. And, uh, and everyone agrees on this. Whether you're Muslim, you're non Muslim, stats and uh, studies have shown that the kid that grows up in such an environment where he sees his father beating the mother, most likely he's going to become a wife beater. The one who sees his father on narcotics and taking drugs, etc., most likely the same thing is going to continue. The vicious cycle will continue. Allah Musta'an. Very important matter. You know, many a times parents, you know, what can I do? How to bring up my kid? You're looking for the abracadabra, magical wand type of answer. And there isn't. An important matter is, but when you, when you start with a parent, but you know, it begins with you. Hey, now that's hard. That's difficult. No, tell us what we need to do. You know, this kid. I'm asking about the kid. Don't tell me it starts with me. That's a big job. But that's the right job. That's the right answer. But that's the tough one. Yes or no? Yes, it's tough. Because it begins with you. We find that uh, halal income. If, for example, the father, the income in the home is haram, how is his du'as going to get accepted? How is anything else going to get accepted? How many stories we have of the people of the past and stuff like that? Imam al-Bukhari, his uh, biography, say, you know, his father was very, very uh, concerned with regards to the income and to make sure that it is halal, etc. Jayid? Now when you tell a parent, parent you know, my kid, is, my kid is doing this, and, you know, what, what exactly do you do? What's your source of income, etc.? Sheikh, I'm asking about the kid. Read something over him. Give me some tawis. Write down something. You know, the kid. But, but what about yourself? Jay, well, what, was the, what was the nourishment that he received? It begins with yourself. It begins with yourself, Jay. Uh, and also, I mean, let's be honest, with many parents, the devices and the Netflix and the movies and the PS uh, uh, games and all of this here, many parents, they absorb their duty and they get their time out time because the kid is busy in the device. You know, can you just leave me alone and go and do something? Here, here, put on something, right. Okay, yeah, this is good for you guys. Yeah, well, watch this. I know there's many parents that do that. Jayid. But that's a mushkila. Jayid, that's a problem. If we always outsource it, etc. I mean, I think in the last week, this Peppa Pig, Jayid, Peppa Pig, Inshallah, none of you kids were watching that, Inshallah. Huh? You guys know what Peppa Pig is? <laughs> uh, you know what Peppa Pig is? Uh, you don't know. Allah bless you. Jayid, uh, Alhamdulillah, my kids don't watch uh, Peppa Pig. It just so happened that my uh, son, his name is uh, Umar, and my daughter is Hannah. And then later on, we found that thing on YouTube, Umar and Hannah. Jayid? So some people thought that, you know, we named our kids after Umar and Hannah. No, it just happened like that, that one is Umar and one is, and one is Hannah. Jayid? But they watch Umar and Hannah, alhamdulillah, right? Uh, but I, I don't know, the other parents did that, you know, the kid is watching Peppa Pig and stuff. I mean, out of all things, you know, the pig. I mean, also, they couldn't choose another animal, like a rabbit or something. You know, maybe a cow, but it had to be a pig. Anyway, but the mushkila is that last week they announced, now you've got Mr. Pepper Pig and Mr. Pepper Pig. Right? So the family has changed. I mean, our phones here, our WhatsApp. If you go into the emojis of WhatsApp, you see the definition of family. They've got all different types of families there. Right? I'm sure you've seen that, right? Uh, in the emojis, it's there. Right? You've got every different type of family here on your WhatsApp emojis. Allah Mustain. The definition of the family is under threat. Allah Mustain. So halal income, don't outsource the tarbiyah of your children, etc. to the devices, right? Uh, there's this famous story, this boy Ibrahim, he comes to his father, anyone Ibrahim here? Any kid named Ibrahim? No, what's your name? No, what's your name? Musa, so Ibrahim came to his father and Ibrahim asked, father came from work, he's tired, dee, da, da, whatever, uh, dad, dad, uh, Abi, uh, how much do you earn in an hour? How much do you earn per hour? Ibrahim, what are you asking, what are you, what are you asking me all these funny things now? But subhanAllah, I'm tired now. Where's the food? Let me eat now. I'll speak to you later. Right, so Ibrahim goes away there, goes to his room. Father then has his meal. After he has his meal, he played with his phone a little bit. And then he goes upstairs and he sees Ibrahim in the room. 
and he comes to Ibrahim's door. He knocks there. Now, you know, I shouldn't have been like that. You know, Ibrahim, you know, you're asking me about uh, how much I earn. So he knocks on the door. He comes in and then he sees like Ibrahim got some money there. Hey, what, what, what are you doing with the money? Where did you get all of this money from? You take it from my wallet. Huh? No, no, no. It's not. It's, I was saving up this money. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So anyway, you were asking me uh, how much I earn per hour. Right? Why? Uh, I earn about uh, 20, 30, 50 dollars an hour. So then Ibrahim moves the pillow and he's putting all these uh, coins together and all of this money, etc. And then he puts 50 dollars together and he says, Here, Dad, I want to buy one hour of your time. Here's the 50 dollars. I want to buy. I want to buy one hour of your time. Jayid, Allah Mustain. That's when that father, you know, got a bit of a shock. Jayid, it hit him hard. And especially the ages, you know, between zero and four, you're never going to get that time again. You know, that's the time when he's that cuddly little baby that you can play around with, etc. After four or five, then he wants to play on his own. He play with the kids, play with the toys and stuff like that. Jayid, 12, khalas, Jayid. And so, when little Ibrahim wants to talk to father and spend time with father and let's play ball and did that, all of that, do it. Because 12, 13, etc. How was your day? Uh, what you learned in school today? Eh, same thing. How's school going? Uh, yeah, okay. Now he doesn't want to talk. Are you with us? 13, 12, etc. Now he's not interested in talking to you, etc. He gives you one, one word answers and he's gone. Jayid. So when he wanted to, you were not there. Allah musta'an. Allah musta'an. Jayid. Uh, also, Ya Mashaykh, you know, sometimes mush, this is a problem. You know, we read Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam this and Imam that and all of this here. You know, they're memorizing from the time they were three days old and all of this here. We think, you know, my kid must be like this. No, Ya Mashaykh, Jayid. And those were exceptions to the norm. Especially under the age of five, kids should play. I know one brother in South Africa, uh, he's, uh, you know, educational uh, counselor and consultant, etc. He's like, many a times we are putting our kids in school too early. Too early, Jayid. And especially the boy, Jayid. Too early for him to go to school. He needs to play. He needs to run around. They need to play. Imam Ghazali, he mentions that otherwise you kill their soul. You kill their soul, Jayid. You know, he's just rigid, everything rigid. Learn Quran now. Look at that kid. He's two and a half years old. He already memorized half the Quran. What's your story? Yeah, let them play. Let them run. Let them enjoy themselves, Jayid. Allah Musta'an. So that was number one, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, Jayid. That lead by example. You be a role model and you set the tone, inshallah. Number two, that the home should be a place of the dhikr of Allah. Salah, salah, salah. That you lead the salah in the house. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, pray a fart salah in the masjid. After that, the nafil, etc., pray it in your house. Right? So that the family, they also see it, stuff like that, right? Look, man, ya bunayya aqimis salah. Oh, my son, establish the prayer. It's not just for the matter of the prayer, and the prayer is important, etc., but also like, you know, that tarbiyah in the home, that there's a higher authority. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it, me, my father, we all bow down to Allah. That my father is not like the final authority in matters. Rather, my father also has to bow down to a higher authority. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jayid. And also, then this opens up the home to so much of other barakah. I know one of the brothers, he mentions that his father, they didn't have any devices in the house and TV. They didn't have any of this. What his mother used to do was, they used to sit with the Quran. Right, Somali family, and uh, the mother used to sit with the Quran and then test them on the arrangement of the surahs. Right? So, Surah Baqarah, uh, what comes before it, what comes after it? You know the answer, then you get a sweet. Uh, surah Falak, what comes before, what comes after? Uh, surah Takathur, what comes before, what comes after? MashaAllah, excellent, excellent, Jayid. Jayid. So, the point is that you create a baraka focused type of environment in the home. Number three, that you make dua to Allah. Make dua to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps your children upon the right way, upon the straight path, etc. Very important dua mentioned in the Noble Quran. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. That, oh Allah, you make our spouses and make our children the coolness of our eyes. Coolness of the eyes means what? That they must be good. When you look at them, you are happy, you are pleased with them. Walhamdulillah, Jayid. That's a prophetic dua mentioned in the Noble Quran, Jayid. But if you have haram income and then you're making dua, then blame yourself, Jayid. Uh, 
Number four, obviously you make the tarbiyah of your children. I mean, if you have to come to the masjid with your kid and he is like jumping up there and running here and, you know, breaking things and, you know, hitting people, etc. you got a bit of a mushkila, right? I remember I went to one guy's house. I mean, the kids were like, uh, you know, problem child, right? I mean, that kid, a visitor came like, you know, I mean, like he was just set loose from a zoo, right? Now, now I'm not going to tell the guy, I mean, what's, wrong, I mean, what's going on with your kid here, right? But I mean, like, you know, at least some tarbiyah, something, right? Uh, you know, the kid just goes to the toilet. He's six years old. He urinates left, right, and center. Uh, I'm not saying people are masoom. Don't expect that the kid is an angel. But I mean, you know, somebody comes, greet. You know, like, I mean, I don't know, your parents, our parents, Jade. You know, if you went to, to visit somewhere, and then let's say you had a cup of tea and you dipped the biscuit in the tea, etc. <clears throat> Later on, when you come to the, why were you dipping in the tea? In front of everybody, you're dipping the tea, etc. You know, the mother would be like that. Make sure, make sure you don't drop this, that, etc. Uh, up till today, I think, you know, if we visit somewhere and I'm with my mother, you know, I will greet everybody. And then the mother would say, Bilal, uh, you, you, made, you made salam with everybody? You, you greeted all your uncles? You made salam with everybody? Yeah. Yes, we already did that, Chayid. But obviously, you know, to reinforce the matter of the tarbiyah, the manners, uh, they don't just barge into the room. They, they knock isti idhan. Your sister is changing. You just don't just open up the door and walk in like that, Chayid. No. I mean, these big six, they should know. Like uh, my kids... For the past maybe one and a half years, Hannah, I'm trying to teach her the Alif Tuya. She's now five years. She memorized some surahs and stuff. But Alif Tuya was not working out, Jayid. Why? Because no consistency. In the house, I'm trying to teach her. Today, I got some time. Tomorrow, no time. The wife is teaching today. Three days, no, 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 nobody taught her. No consistency. Two months ago, we put her in a madrasa. Every day now, we need to make sure Monday to Friday, half past two, she's at the madrasa. So with that apa and with the muallima and the other kids and stuff. Masha Allah, in a space of one and a half months, she already knows her alif to ya without any problem whatsoever. You know, but, but the environment was conducive. Number one, sometimes they don't want to learn from the parent. Jai, the parent, no. But, you know, an outsider, khalas, she's learning from that outsider. And now she has other friends who are there with her in that madrasa. It's an environment conducive to learning. As opposed to just you, Alif, Alif, A, U, E. There, you know, she's competing with the next one. Jai, she's competing with the next one. Excellent. Uh, lastly, Yama Shaykh, and we close on this with Nillahi Ta'ala. Grappling with the times. Obviously, we cannot live isolated in a bubble. There's the internet, there's the TV, there's the media, there's schools, there's government schools. Not everybody can go to an Islamic school. Not everybody is cut out for doing homeschooling, etc., etc., Jayid. Uh, there's, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, the kid is 12, 13, 14 years old. There's other kids in school who are uh, messing around and is with this girl and they've gone to the prom and uh, this one's uh, uh, already lost her virginity and, uh, you know, what's wrong with you, etc. I mean, the norm has completely changed today. Marriage is no longer the norm, but rather it's the exception. Being a virgin up to the point that you are married, uh, Jade, is no longer the norm, but rather it's the exception. There's drugs, there's all of these fit and etc., etc., can we put them into a bubble and close it up and lock them up? Obviously, that's not practical. So the only thing we can do is try to inoculate them, try to vaccinate them from these fitan, inshallah. That you try to have a positive relationship with your children. That if there's an issue, if there's a, like one sister she mentions, she mentions that, you know, every day she speaks to her daughter, you know, what happened in school. So the daughter mentions, today the teacher read a story to us, public school, what was the story? The story was about this little boy. He wants to wear a pink dress. Story. Huh? Five-year-old kid about John. And John is at school. And John is at home. And John went to the supermarket. And John bought a pink dress. And John says, I want to wear a pink dress. And John's mummy said, no problem at all. You know, it's fine. There's no problem. People dress differently. And if you want to wear a dress, my son, or my daughter, or whatever you want to be, it's all okay. And there's no difference between a boy and a girl and all of this here. So the mom was like, when my daughter started telling me that, I'm like, well, you know, what's going on here? You know, she inside, but, she said, but that was inside my head. I obviously didn't express it outwardly. But then I said to my daughter, okay, so they're saying, you know, but boys and girls are different, the mom says to the daughter, but boys and girls are different. 
There are many differences. The daughter is like, uh, for example, the mom said, boys can't have babies. And so the daughter, she's five, six years old, she's like, yeah, you, you, you're right. You're right, the boys can't have babies. And also, boys can't uh, give uh, babies milk, right? Boys can't do that. And so the daughter is like, yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, boys can't uh, give babies uh, milk. Oh, Mother is obviously putting in the other perspective with regards to the matter into the mind of the kid. Uh, purifying the mind of the kid. Putting the kid upon the fitra. And then the mom says, uh, then I said to her, now let's say, uh, you know, they're in Canada, so that's where they live in Canada. And the mom said, you know, when it's snowing outside and we need to shovel uh, the driveway, who's better suited to shoveling the driveway? Myself or dad? Immediately the daughter said, dad. Why? Because he's stronger. Okay, so you see, there are differences. And uh, let's say you are sick, my daughter. You are sick and you got the flu and stuff like this here. Who would you prefer? To be with you and looking after you. Myself or dad? You obviously. Why? Because you know you hug me and you kiss me and you rub the medicine, etc. etc. Excellent. Khalas, that was enough. That was enough, Jair. But now, if that parent didn't have that link with that kid, didn't know what's happening in school and this and that, etc., Jair, this opportunity wouldn't have been there. Are you with us? Jade? There wouldn't have been that counterbalance. And so very important to have a positive relationship with them. Right? If, if you're not a friend, maybe that's difficult, etc. I mean, like, my father was never our friend. I mean, your grandfather was never his, his son's friend. Right? But times have also changed. Right? If you are not necessarily a friend, but at least be friendly towards them. Right? I can't really remember, you know, my dad, like, playing, you know, too much of the soccer and this and that. It, it was a different generation. Different generation. And we are living in a different generation too, inshallah. Right? Also, another important matter, especially as they get older, don't treat them like kids. Allah mentions in the Noble Quran, the orphan, when he's coming of age, becoming baligh, now you can give him his money. Test him out whether he can use his money because he's baligh, because he's come of age. So treat him like an adult. And so similarly, if you're treating your kid and you're pampering them when they're 14, 15, 17, etc., then you don't blame anyone when he's 25 years old and he's got a problem in his marriage and it's mommy, 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 this. And daddy this and give me this and that, etc. Big baby. That's what you have. You just have a big baby. As one brother in South Africa, he says, he says, unfortunately, many parents, you are incubating monsters. Uh, you are incubating, incubating monsters. Allah Mustain. Lastly, I'm a shaykh. And so the environment. Have a positive relationship with them. The, uh, conducive environment. Like these kids here now, mashallah. Even those kids on the top who are playing and running around and making noise. Mafi mushkila. At least they're doing it at the masjid. Jade, at least it doesn't matter at masjid, Jade. It's better than them being on PS2 and 5 and 10 or whatever it might be. At that masjid, alhamdulillah, khair and barakah. I'm sure you've seen those pictures of like uh, some of the masajid in Turkey. Then they have like a jumping castle in Ramadan at the back of the masjid, Jade. I know some of our uncles, you know, your, your hairs will start falling off, etc., Jade. Uh, but some of those masjids at the back of the masjid, they have a jumping castle in the month of Ramadan. So after Taraweeh, then the kids, they go there and they play and they do all of this here. So that's the time when people are eating. Eating and so it's not salah time. Let them play and let them run and all of this. The man urinated in the masjid and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, let him be. Are you with us, Imam Shaykh? And so we can cut them slack with regards to certain matters. Ensure that your kids are enrolled in some madrasa, whether it's homeschooling madrasa via the internet, it's with some kids out there, it's at the masjid, wherever. You take them on a hike. Great, mashallah, Australia, you have very nice hikes and this and that, etc. Take them out. One brother, he mentions that I have three sons. I've taken them on one hike, all of them together. But after that, I found taking one kid on the hike alone was much more beneficial. He took one son on the hike. Another time, the other kid. Another time, the other kid. And one time with all of them together. He says, because that bonding that we did between myself and the one kid, well, you couldn't put a price tag to that. I really got to know that kid when we were alone together. But when three of them and this one jumping and they're playing with each other... You're just a facilitator as the parent. But there's not real bonding time between one another. Try it. And so, from whatever we said, you, if you sat here for one hour, if at least maybe just one idea, you know, okay, you know, that's, that's uh, something worth pursuing. And you pursue it, alhamdulillah, khair and barakah. 
Jayid, excellent. And lastly, a Mashaykh, there's absolutely no magical cure or anything of the sort. Look at Nuh alayhi salam and his son, etc. Uh, somebody asked, you know, is Islamic school the alternative or homeschooling or government? There's no one, one answer that fits for all, Jayid. You can have a kid going to the Islamic school and turns out rotten. And you could have somebody who is in the worst of places and turns into a diamond. You make your effort. After that, it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Ibrahim and his father. Look at Adam alayhi salam. And the one son killed the other. Abu al-Bashar, father of everyone. The one son of his took the life of the other son because he was jealous. Allah mustan. Look at uh, Yaqub alayhi salam and his sons. They took Yusuf and threw him into the well because they were jealous. Allahu musta'an jayid. And Yaqub alayhi salam is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lastly, jayid, we state the verse of the noble Quran. Ala inna al-khasirin al-ladheena khasiru anfusahum wa ahlihim yawm al-qiyamah. That the greatest loss, ala inna al-khasirin, those who are losers, al-ladheena khasiru anfusahum, those who lost themselves, they were so immersed, they even forgot themselves in this dunya. خسروا أنفسهم وأهليهم and their family يوم القيامة and the opposite Allah mentions in the noble Quran والذين آمنوا واتبعتهم ذريتهم بإيمان ألحقنا بهم and those who believed then followed them their progeny so they believe they get paradise and if their progeny their children etc were not on their level but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites them together and puts them in paradise together those who believed and they did righteous actions as opposed to the ones who had a don't care attitude and expected that you know mashallah my children will turn out into farishtas and angels etc etc we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant us خير and بركة. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bless us. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant us the best in this world and in the hereafter. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect us and protect our children and that we all die upon iman. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect the iman of our children and our progeny. We ask Allah to make our children and our 